technological savvy. They can use emails. And I was I was very surprised when so we email each other, uh, and they're the ones who kept asking, so when is this novel going to be done? <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, they were quite open. But I think um, there are times that I have to ask questions. I'm the one who has to ask questions because you know they will tell parts that. You know, they think that it's important, but sometimes I ask some of the parts that they think, "Oh, you want to know that?" You know, like, okay. Uh, so, uh, what they think is important sometimes it's okay for me, but I would ask other questions that they think is not really that important. So, perhaps, perhaps, perhaps what was also interesting for you are the, the details of their daily lives or their feelings. Uh, and perhaps they, they tell a story more like, and then we did this, and then we did that, like a storyline. Maybe you were more interested also. Yeah, in yeah. they prefer to, to tell you the big, yeah, no. the big picture, the, you know, the politics and the ideology. Yeah. And, yeah. But like I would tell a story, uh, I would ask questions like, um, for example, uh, the late Umar Said. Uh, he had to be away from his wife for 17 years. Yeah. Uh, and then finally they met in uh, Egypt after 17 years. And so that kind of thing, you know, he didn't really know at the beginning. And then I, you know, I said, how did you finally uh, meet your family? I really need to know that. You know, so, so things like that. And then, oh, okay, you want to know that? Okay, so yeah, but at the beginning, he was telling more telling about, you know, we have to stop in here and then we have to meet. President Sukarno, and you know, and so and so, so uh, they actually went around eight or nine countries before they finally yeah, end up in Beijing. Yeah. So you call them in your books, about the, they're called wanderers. Like yeah, Dima yeah. Suryo, he's a wanderer. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Kayaban, they in in in, in, in um, Japanese, uh, the president uh, Abu Rahman Malik called them Kayaban, the, the Kayaban, because they they went around and, and then finally they end up. It's it's, uh, it's it's amazing to, to, to read. Uh, no, it's it's quite impressive to read the story about uh, the, the fact that Dimas Suryo had uh, he was really homesick. Mm -hmm. He was he was not able to find happiness anywhere except for in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, actually, I'm not going to tell the end of the book. <laughs> no, <don't. laughs> so, so I'm sorry, you have to read the book yourself to uh, But the end is quite quite gripping. And uh, surprising, surprising also. Um, I have to look at the uh, keep, keep the time in, uh, in mind. Um, I have a question to the both of you actually. I've always wondered uh, to what degree a translation is the product of a joint effort by both translator and author. Did the two of you work together, and uh, if so, in what form? Shall I answer that? Yes. We didn't work together at all. <laughs> and that's the princi my principle of translating. There is, uh, of course, there's an author, and there's a book, and there's a reader. And I'm one of these readers. And basically, I'm talking, and I'm reading the text. And basically, to be frank, I do not care about the author so much, what the author uh, <laughs> has to say about it. I'm working from this text, from talking about Facebook. That's the language, and that's what I have to work with. And that's a very sort of, I can go into that, but that's a more theoretical thing. There's a, there's a discussion between the text and the reader, and I'm sort of an ideal reader dealing with there's an, there's another practical re reason that I think talking too much with the author, you get into fights, in, in, inevitably. And I'm very lucky. That Lila doesn't know Dutch enough to know, to know what I was doing, and we met for uh, se several hours in Jakarta. To, I had I asked her several words and several phrases, but for the rest, I kept her out of the translation and out of the text. Yeah. And I so hope she's happy with it. It's a matter of trust. It's a matter of trust. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I don't speak Dutch, and I just uh, uh, John Glenn told me that uh, he's, you know. Uh, Hank is interested, and and then he told me that Hank has uh, translated uh, Pramudi's work, and then I also asked my sister who speaks Dutch, and then she's very excited, and for me that's enough. So uh, we met, we met for several hours, and he asked questions 
just to confirm certain things and that's all. But you know, I don't speak, I just have to trust completely. That's all. Yeah, thank you. Hank, I was just wondering, when you make your translation, is there any is there a second reader? Or is there somebody who who, who looks over your shoulder? The first time I did usually I ask my mother to read it as a sort of a general Really? Reader. She was your general she reader? Yes. Yeah, oh, with the Korea. Yeah? And this is the first time I didn't ask anybody to read it. And one of the main reasons was that I knew that the coach would read it, the publisher would read it very carefully. And then instead of having fights with my mother about certain things, I got into fights with the guys about certain things. It's one way or the other. You finally, you have to hand over your product to, yeah, to the yeah. second. Exactly. To, yeah. you, have, you, you always have to make sure. And even then, I mean, translators always make mistakes. And I'm sure that those of you who want to compare the Indonesian with the Dutch, you'll see things that you say, ah, this is completely wrong. Mm. Hey, but that is, that's what it is. Um, before we, just an hour ago, we had a, we had a chat together and then um, you came up with a question that you really wanted to ask uh, Lionel. <laughs> About 1965, but all what happened in 1965, but only as a background. And Hank wondered why Indonesian writers were so obsessed with writing writing about uh, the the uh, period of the revolution of, of uh, 1945-1949. But why why weren't there why are there no novelists? that write about 1965, what actually happened, not as a background, but actually describing the events of 1965. Can you say something about the <coughs> an answer maybe? in the meantime, Laila, or? Oh. Um, <laughs> so why? Um, well, 45 to 49, that's been a long time ago. So obviously there are classic writers who has writ uh, written many, many, many books and have made movies out of that, although I must say that all of the movies are very stereotyped. You know, the, the Dutch are the bad guys, the Indonesians are the good guys. Uh, and I think um, there's no gray area. In, I, I'm talking about the real old movies, yeah. Uh, but that's the classic ones. And uh, I think the novels too, it's, 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 uh, I, I haven't been in love with the novels who have, who have uh, you know, use the 45, 49 uh, stories. I, I think we should we should have a really serious one. That you know, and I, I wasn't I'm, until now. I haven't been in love with the characters. You know, like a really strong character. The novels from from the revolution period. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's one movie, the Bayus Maris Manolo, but it's a movie. We're talking about literature now. Lewat uh, Malam. That's a good one. But anyway, that's a movie. Uh, but I'm talking like in general, usually it's really stereotype, you know, Dutch, and then the typical stereotype of the swearing in Dutch. I mean, it's really, you know, so okay. They, they use so, Americans to, to play the Dutch role, the Dutch part. Yeah, or Australian. <laughs> so, uh, if Hank asked that why, how come, well, 45, it's a long time ago. If you notice the Indonesian literature now, nobody ever touched about the Dutch colonization anymore, except for Ipsaka Banu, that is going to next week. The only one out of the few who's writing something on the Hindi of London, you know? And we were like surprised, like, oh, we forgot about that period. Because <laughs> it's been a while. I'm like, oh, okay, you're writing about that, okay? So it's, it's been kind a, of an old story. Yeah, right? you really should go to Gramedia because now nobody writes about that anymore, except for Ipsaka Banu. About 65, because we just went through reformation in 1998, and for 32 years we couldn't talk about 65 uh, other than the government. So, everybody you know, started talking about it, not only just 65, but about 98, about, you know, just the things that we couldn't talk about. You know, so yeah, surely uh, there are several. I'm not saying all novels are talking about 65, but some. 
I, I can count just, it's, it's less than five, okay? Um, yeah, um, Umbia um, um, yeah, loves me. Yeah, so I, 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 but I even didn't talk about the whole thing. It's just a, a parts of the situation. So, um, that's, that's my it's, it's new. It's, 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 we just went through 98, you know? And um, who knows in the future, somebody, somebody actually to take on the, the challenge and, and write. Yeah. About 1965. I think one thing that um, also counts is the fact that what you say till this day, really know what what happened in 1965. That's another problem. <laughs> cautious. Yeah. Not not necessarily cautious in a sense that we're afraid that we're going to be arrested. Not that, but cautious that there's a lot of uh, things that we need to know. There's a lot of holes. You know, like you said that day, because I'm a journalist, maybe that, that I still need to know the whole package. What's the real story? Like, who's Colonel Odin? Who's Sankam? Like, there's a lot of the actors role, role, and big yes. actors that we still don't know the roles, you know? And there's a lot of gossip around, like, that night, this is what happened, who's there and who's that, you know, like, there's a lot of. And I don't think that writers are to write things that are based on gossip. Like, we, we, we want to know what's going on, and that's one of the reasons that 65 is, is the background. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I just saw that uh, we have about 10 minutes for questions, if there are any questions from the audience. Um, A question about the uh, US support novel uh, as a writer, but more as a uh, Indonesian citizen. Um, we've seen here the movie uh, The Act of Killing from Joshua Oppenheimer. Mm -hmm. How did you feel in Indonesia about that, uh, that movie? Was it a, uh, uh, could, could everybody see it, the movie, and how were the reactions? Did, did everybody hear the question? It's about the, the act of killing Joshua Oppenheimer. <coughs> Um, yes, uh, I have seen it, and uh, in Tempo we actually uh, saw it long before uh, we got a copy from uh, some friends. And uh, I'll tell you what we think, or what I think personally, but uh, I just want to tell the audience that afterwards we were inspired to, to do the same thing, but a different approach. We are doing journal, journal, in a journalistic approach, uh, but we did what we did was a special edition and interviewing all, not only in North Sumatra but all Asia. Yeah, uh, sorry, all Java. I'm sorry, all Java. Um, yeah, all Java, and especially Java Timur, East, East Java, and Bali. Yeah, and none of the sources refused. To, to be interviewed, they all were very proud of what they did. So that's what really uh, shocked us. Yeah. Okay. That's that's about our special edition. Now about uh, the movie itself, I personally think I didn't write a review. Usually I write reviews for uh, Tempo, but that for that time I didn't write a review. It was um, Ariel Herrero. Uh, but I personally think. Uh, and I told Joshua about it, you know, I, I don't know him personally yet, but uh, we know each other because uh, at that time I want to know. Uh, my only criticism was that, well not only, but my, my first impression was that I felt that he didn't give um, context, context of the, you know, because people abroad, maybe we understand, but you know, uh, the United States or the, um, in Europe and maybe Australia would not, but some people would need a context, you know, like a big big picture of what is Indonesia and what happened with the, all the elite uh, conflict and, you know, and what is uh, PKI and why, why they were accused, things like that. They, they should, he should have a longer context, but what he did was a little bit just, uh, you know, shorter 
short uh, summary at the very beginning. So I asked him, like, you know, and he said, hey, he, he wants to, you know, he wants to, you know. And I said, yeah, you, you succeeded, but, you know, I wish you would give a little bit more context. That's, that's, uh, that's what I think. Okay, thank you. Oh, sorry, second thing. No, no, because this is important. That his approach is not a, it's not a convention. You know, like documentary usually, you, his approach is you ask the source to do a reenactment. Re re yeah, that's very unusual. And uh, what the, how do you say it in English? Yeah, it's it's really you're walking on a very thin approach. Well, I'm saying this is this is a technical thing, but because I, I, I write reviews, so I said, you know, this is really a little bit dangerous, you know, because. The documentary movies before usually, you know, you interview people, you give contacts, and you know, and then he purposely just, you know, asked them to do it. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's my, uh, what I said to him. But overall, the movie kind of succeeded to, to, to be aware of what happened. Thank you. Any more questions? There with that. If, if you have all the resources available, uh, I was wondering about this period of about two years, 65 to 66 at the end of it, what happened, uh, what strategy would you use to discover, uh, what is needed to know what actually happened in those one and a half years, say you have all the resources available, uh, what approach would you take? I think because I'm a journalist, first of all, I'm going to write as a journalist, if I have the, all the sources. I think because I'm a journalist, I think Tempo would, you know, we we're going to do a big story on that. Uh, we had a little bits and pieces that, uh, you know, uh, in the past about the, some forensic, you know, forensic doctor who's saying that, oh, you know, that uh, uh, what happened with the generals and everything. Yeah, but just some bits and pieces, but there's a lot of holes. Yeah? And uh, it's. To write a story, like what Hank said, that why don't you write the story on the real, you know, what happened. I think uh, when you write a fiction, it has it has to be a character driven. You have to have a character. You have to have a storyline on the character. You see what I mean? So uh, at the end of the day, this event, how bloody it was, that's still a background. That's what I think. Maybe Hank doesn't agree. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I saw somebody up there. I mean, Mano, uh, it's not a question, it's more because of the relationship of a writer and, uh, and translator. It reminds me of the Garcia Marquez when he received his Nobel Prize that he expressed special thanks to his American because he found words which he could not find in the Spanish language. That is that's yeah. beautiful, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and the, the way he became famous, he gave this, his gratitude to this translator. That's all. Thank you very much for that, uh, for that extra, uh, for your comments. It's beautiful. Can I add one thing to, to stop the whole thing? I and the publisher, uh, the publisher is sort of a dark cloud over my head. <coughs> The book is called Kulang, and Kulang is a very complicated word. And of course, you can say, well, it's home, house, two house, and so on and so forth, right? But Kulang to die, to go back, exactly, Boy, okay. to go back, and so on and so forth. And uh, when you read the novel, I'm not allowed to tell you the end, but I can tell you, eventually, the whole book is about death. It's about the dark shadow of death. And in that respect, the novel really evokes 65, 66 in a sort of indirect way. It gives the context of 65, 66. And I still think the title of the book, I don't know how you invented it, but the title of the book really covers the main theme of the, of the book, that it's not only about nostalgia and, and, nostalgia and about longing and about uh, wanting to go home, but also 
the end of life and going back to the earth where you came from. Excuse me, I one more question, and it must be the last question. Okay, <laughs> um, a question to uh, Mr. Hank Meyer. Uh, when you are doing a translation, right now you explained that even the word pulam can have several meanings. Uh, how sure are you when you are translating that you are getting close to what, in, in this instance, uh, Mrs. Kudor? I don't know where it comes from. I don't, I don't. I'm here. Oh, there. Ah, okay. <laughs> well, I don't know because, like I explained before, I don't know if she really meant that. But I'm fully aware that, uh, well, most words, not only in Indonesian but also in Dutch, are ambiguous. There's always ambivalence and so on and so forth. But let's face it. I mean, it's, translation is not only an art but it's also a craft, and you have to finish a, a text, and you cannot keep on thinking about every word or all the ambiguities of all the words and so on and so forth. And you have to make some choices and say, well, these are words, some key words, you could say, key words in the text that I want to make sure that it is a, a word that is repeated in Dutch in the same way and ambivalent and ambivalent. But of course, I miss a lot of things. And what translators always say, you lose things from the original and you gain things in Dutch. And there's always a very delicate balance between the two. Thank you very much. So, Inge, this was the last question? Yes, it is. Yes. Uh, I want to thank uh, Leila and Hank for, uh, for being here with us today. And uh, again, the Dutch translation will be um, in the bookstores uh, from the 1st of October. And perhaps I can also mention that tomorrow there will be a reading. Um, you are going to read from your from your yes. from the Indonesian from the original and the translation the English translation. And Jarvi Vahala, the English translation is it's available. It's a, oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> so the English translation is available. And actually, Sunday you were here as well. What yes. are you going to do here Sunday? I'm talking about uh, it's from 65 theme. Yeah. It's on the, on the 29th, on the reading uh, Leila. That's the reading, and uh, Jarvi Vahala is reading. The translation yes. Yes. on the 29th and on the 31st. Uh, you are talking to Mr. Martin Eikhoff from Niot, and on the 5th of June about uh, shared history. No, I, I, 